Now, the midterms are hours away, and people are feeling the strain. Lots of stress and anxiety out there. And, of course, it doesn't help with this guy scaring everyone. There are some spooky suggestions that demand a fact check, and we have that treat for you. See what I did there? You get a choice of trick or treat on Halloween, right? But you get no choice except to feast on facts on this show. The hypocrisy, the nonsense, it's all too scary, even on Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Let's get after it. <laughs> does, does he write that stuff himself? Or, or does he just throw Scrabble letters on the ground and then reads whatever he sees? It's amazing. Anyway, a new study claims that Democrats are indeed soothing their anxieties with excess food and booze. Here's proof. This was Chris Matthews two months ago. This is him now. <laughs> Sad. This was uh, Joe Scarborough a month ago. Look at him. This is him now. <laughs> This was Alec Baldwin just two weeks ago. <laughs> this is him now. <laughs> As you've uh, heard, he just got arrested for punching someone over a parking space. So I guess he doesn't like it when people cut in line. Oh. Yes. I wonder who stole the space. Was it a Dodge? Caravan? <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> so stupid. This is <laughs> joke of the year. All right. But this isn't surprising. Politics can be stressful. A study by Arizona State shows that 25% of their students said the last election caused them clinically significant stress. Now, some reporters said students were actually traumatized, but I disagree. This election, it didn't cause trauma. You know what causes trauma? This. It could happen to anyone. An election doesn't go your way, and you've been obsessively stressing about it ever since. Yeah, that describes me exactly. It's been two years since Trump won, and I'm still traumatized. How do I toughen up? You should try the trauma guys. What? Is this one of those drugs you're always trying to get me to try? No, not at all. It's just a few friendly faces who help you overcome your symptoms. What do you say? Want to give it a shot? Mm, I don't know. I guess so. Great. Hey, guys. Hey, who are you? What's going on? <sighs> Where am I? Well, hello. How are you? It's so good to have you here. What is this place? Well, this book is about Jasper. It's called Let Me Tell You Even More About Jasper. It's 1,267 pages long. Now, you can hold on to my little felt Jasper because I'm going to read this entire book to you all in one sitting. Chapter one. I first adopted Jasper back in 2012. This was after Vishlas were Biden. raised by the Magyar King. The Magyar King was very protective of their dogs. They did not let any Magyar King were very protective of their dogs. They did not let any go out of the country until no! So get the trauma guys today. We'll show you what real trauma is. So you stop being such a So does election stress damage everyone? Nope. Only those who make politics personal, meaning the left. But you, you're going to be fine. If Republicans lose the house, yeah, it'll be sad, but then you'll go hunting. If Republicans win, you'll be pleased, but then you'll go hunting. I find my viewers go hunting after everything. My point, for us, politics isn't personal. It's part of life, but not life itself. It's just another game in a long season, which is why we don't harass people in restaurants. We just tip them because we know where we are and where are we? We are where it's at. We're the hot country. Can you believe it? 
country. <laughs> Meanwhile, for the left, politics is everything. It's who they are, all they have. They get up, watch MSNBC, hate Trump, go to bed, repeat every day. Right now, there is a story up on CNN saying women should stop having sex with their husbands until they vote their way. Wow, getting sex advice from CNN. <laughs> That's like getting sex advice from CNN. <laughs> so for the left, the midterm is a lose-lose proposition. If they don't get a big win, they'll be distraught. Remember 2016? A million babies with full diapers flinging poop at each other. But if they win, it's not going to be any fun either because he's still there. And they hate him just like they hate daddy. This is especially true of the media. The president of the United States is racist. Even Albert Einstein may have ended up in a Nazi concentration camp with Donald Trump's viewpoint on immigration. If you vote for Trump, then you, the voter, you, not Donald Trump, are standing at the bar border like Nazis going, you here, you here. And these bozos lecture us on civility? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for civility. Hell, I'm so civil, I wash my hands before I go into the restroom. <laughs> I send flowers after a colonoscopy. <laughs> but you spend two years calling a guy Hitler, racist, sexist, a traitor, then you tell us to be nice? I take no lectures from you clowns. Fact is, what you're really seeing are Democrats feeling what it's like for the very first time to be Republicans, to be the butt of a joke. And so job numbers soar, optimism improves, and GDP grows, and they hate it. The economy is hotter than Lou Dobbs on spring break. <laughs> and they're still glum. So my advice, no matter what happens on Tuesday, be nice. Let's all show them how to act. Like this guy, talking to CNN's Jim Acosta. I just wanted to apologize for flipping you off in Tampa. Thank I you. I got carried away. You know, it's like I was asking for facts and not opinions. And that's okay. I, that's all I know. I understand. That's all we want. That's very nice of you to I say that. I get carried away, so I just wanted to apologize. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very I much. I accept your apology, and, and I hope uh, I get to see you again. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot. Take Thanks. care, guys. See ya. <laughs> no, nothing like Santa Claus giving you the finger. <laughs> So no matter the outcome, you got to be good. We've been called every name in the book forever. It won't change, but neither should you. We're in this. Let's get after it. And welcome tonight's guest. His hair has more curls than my bicep workout. Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor, Charlie Herzog. He's got a face for radio and a body for medical colleges. Fox News radio host Tom Shalhoub. She brings the doom and gloom to the newsroom. National Review reporter Kat Timpf. And Paul Bunyan looks up to him. Former WWE superstar and my massive sidekick Tyrus. Charlie, how do you see Tuesday unfolding? Will the Democrats be sore losers or sore winners? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Uh, no, but I think your monologue there was excellent. And, oh, and that, really, that really is exactly what is uh, plaguing politics today. You have uh, uh, this huge group of people who want to make politics everything about their lives. Right. And when you make, and, and that's the reason that, that I think a lot of smart people are suspicious of expanding government and putting government in every aspect of our lives, because we don't want it part of it. It, it should be something that functions for us, not something that governs every aspect of our lives mm -hmm. and, and takes over our minds and our hearts and, and makes us miserable or whatever. You can't be happy if no. politics is in every part of your life, because it's a miserable thing, politics. It is, it is. And, and, I, I, and, and it is, the, you know, when we try to be fair, we all, we're always saying, well, you know, both sides do this. Well, this isn't, this is not true mm -hmm. about this. It's not both sides want to make the, uh, politics about everything. It really is. It's a leftist sort of ideology yeah. that wants to make the government uh, a part of every aspect of, of your lives, and, and it takes over. Whereas, like you said, the rest of us just want to go hunting. Exactly. Tom, um, if the Democrats take the House, 
Will it calm the resistors or will it just make them want more? It will, it will not calm them, Greg, because no matter what they get, it's not going to be enough. Yes. You know, I mean, some people think it's going to be, a, they think there's going to be a blue wave. If they don't get the biggest wave in the world, they're going to be crying. It'll be terrible. Mm -hmm. They'll probably get some seats here and there, but yeah. it's not going to be enough. I, uh, I'm amazed that they're just getting to this, this study that, uh, or the, the, the news story that women. Yes. Women are going to stop having sex with men <laughs> until they get their way. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, in my experience, they've been doing that for like 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's uh, shift over to Kat. You're a libertarian. How much sort of effect will that have on yeah, the election? If, yeah, how much will what, have, <laughs> will what have an effect on the election? Liber uh, libertarians. Being libertarian? Yes. Well, we'll get a couple votes. Yes. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, you know. Two votes. We'll, There'll be two, spe specifically we'll, two votes. We'll all have a reason. You and Stossel. Yeah, me and John Stossel <laughs> will vote for the same guy. Yes. Larry Sharp for New York. Yes. Yeah, I got an, I, I exactly one woo from the crowd just now. <laughs> to Larry Sharp. It's Larry, Larry, he's out there. It's Larry, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to vote, but I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I know that my guy's not going to win. Mm hmm which is, you know, makes elections very not stressful for me always. Right. Yes, it's true. I live in New York. I know anybody I vote for is not going to win. It's like, why, you know, I don't leave the house often. I will leave the house to vote. I don't know why, <laughs> but I will. Yeah. But I think it's just going to really come down to enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Democrats are really enthusiastic. Polls show that they're more enthusiastic than Republican voters. So Republican voters need to get more enthusiastic mm -hmm. about voting. I know that it's boring. Mm -hmm. I know that you have to wait in a line, mm -hmm. and there's not even like a roller coaster at the end of it. True. <laughs> you have to leave your apartment, and you don't even get to buy anything or drink anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> which is the only reason I leave my apartment, and only sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's true. You usually have need, it delivered. Usually I have it delivered. I've used post mates four times today. <laughs> You're a sad person. True. Last word to you, Tyrus. Thanks. <laughs> Look, historically, when a president comes in, usually the other side gets the House and the Senate. That is true. So the Democrats are enthusiastically paranoid and nervous because they might have wrote a check that they're behind can't cash. Mm -hmm. If they get just the House and they keep the Senate, that's still an L. Yeah. Yeah. You know and, and here's the thing. If they get both, mm -hmm. go back to Obama. When Obama lost mm -hmm. the House and the Senate, they're like, yeah, we got him. He's done. Yeah. So what do the people do? We just gave him another four years. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. either way, yeah. the president's going to win on this. Because mm -hmm. obstruction, people just hate. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem. That's why they're, they're going to still be upset. They're still going to be bickering. Like, they get the house, and they're going to change the name of the fruit. It's going to be in cherry, in pie, <laughs> in peach. And every, and every time they send it to the Senate, they like, it's the same thing. No. Yeah. Like, it's, they're just going to be complain more. Yeah. It's, so, it's never going to get any nicer. That's my prediction. And, and if Republicans hold the Senate, uh, they can, if, uh, President Trump can fill the federal bench with good judges, and that'll be great for him going into 2020. All right. Yeah. Let's talk more about this.